Hey, my name is Chris. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm going to be going over the OB triage complaint leakage of fluid. I'm going to break this video up into three main sections. They're going to be based off of gestational age. And the first one I'm going to be going over right now is term patients. So anyone that's 37 and 0. When you look at a patient that's 37 and 0 and they're coming and they say, oh my gosh, I broke my bag of water at 4 a.m., you kind of should go into this certain mindset. And the first one is just getting a complete history of the patient, figuring out primarily their obstetric history, so how many prior deliveries they've had and what was the route. So if their C-sections were classicals or low transverse, that's also important to note as well. So having a complete OB history for them um, is gonna be important. And then you're gonna also wanna do your physical exam. Your physical exam on these patients, first you're gonna have to think, you know, kind of streamlining it, you're gonna to wanna to do an NST at least for 20 minutes to assess them. You're not sure if they broke the bag of water. And you're also going to wanna to do a tocometer to see if they're contracting or not. The contractions are important because if they're contracting and they're making change, then like they're in labor. So you don't really know if they're prompt or, they, or if they're just in labor. So you have to ask them that. So if they broke their bag of water before contractions, then they are prompt. So with those, you're gonna then, you know, do your ultrasound and look for breach or vertex presentation for the baby. If they're breech, for some programs, they might not be comfortable doing breech vaginal deliveries, and that's okay. At our institution, there are providers that do allow for this, which gives us a different asset, but for some programs, this is a situation where you're gonna be going for a C-section, so that's a very closed case. Broke your bag of water, you confirm it, and then you're gonna go and scan, and they are breech, kinda done. But how to confirm that they actually broke their bag of water? There's actually three different ways. The amateur test, the other one is a ferning method. This is like looking at the fluid and seeing if it ferns. And the other one is a nitrogen paper test. So for ferning, I'm gonna go over briefly. Um, you take some fluid, you're gonna put it on a slide and you're gonna see it as it desiccates, it dries out. You're gonna kind of see if, see if it like has a ferning pattern. I'll show a picture of it right here. The second way you can do it as well is this nitrazine paper test. This paper looks yellow on normal and you're gonna put a little bit of fluid on it from that what you collected. And if that fluid turns the paper blue, then they likely broke their bag of water because the paper would become blue when it becomes more basic. So pH greater than six will make it turn blue. The last test is an amateur test. So when you're doing your speculum exam, you're gonna open up the cervix or open up um, and to visualize the cervix this is a long Q-tip that goes, goes in the back of the posterior fornix. You hold it there for one minute. You can also just check right there to see if they're visually dilated off of the cervix, which is a pretty good like two for one kind of method. But you hold it there for one minute, you pull out the Q-tip, you put it into the container for the amnesture test, and you swirl that around for one minute. You take out that Q-tip and you throw it away. You don't break this one off into the container like it's, it is for like the uh, VGSN or for... Um, any of the other tests really, or the FFN. You don't do it for those. So you take a tube out, you throw it away. So you have the amateur test. The amateur test has to be run by 15 minutes for accuracy. So usually you should try and get on your team to make sure that that's being processed. If any of those come back positive, then you have high likelihood the patient broke their bag of water. If, the, for example though, that they broke their bag of water over 24 hours ago, then sometimes those tests might not be as accurate. So maybe you might, might, not, might not see ferning or the amnesty might turn back negative, And that's something you have to be very cognizant of if they're coming in and they're greater than 24 hours from when they quoted that they broke their bag of water. And this is primarily the way that you're gonna be breaking down uh, term prom assessments. And then you can quote the Hannah et al paper, the term prom trial, and you can kind of go over the facts that we're talking about patients who had broke their bag of water and they were term, if they started off the induction with oxytocin, there was a decreased likelihood they were gonna have maternal infection. Little fun fact, you throw it to your patients, see what they say. That is for term patients. Then we can jump down and we go into the preterm category. Now the preterm category is very vast. Different programs have a certain cutoff at the baseline. I'm going to just say 24 weeks of gestation up to 36 and six, which is technically when the preterm would end, because 37 and 0 is when you'd be term term. So during 36, 24 to 36 and six, there's different categories. So I'll start roughly right now, kind of greater than 32 weeks of gestation. So if they're greater than 32 weeks of gestation, they're preterm. The way you're gonna manage these patients is you're still gonna do the history, you're still gonna scan, you're still gonna check for fluid as well, you can. But then also you're gonna wanna do like the amateur nitrazine or the ferning test to see if they actually broke their bag of water. Now we can look at the ALPS trial, and this is one of the interventions you can give for this, for this category, and this is giving steroids. 
The steroids would be beta methazone. You give 12 milligrams, you give it twice, you give it 24 hours apart. Good little thing for fetal lung maturity. Only steroids really are options for greater than 32 weeks. But when you're going under 32 weeks of gestation, then you can go to this term full court press. And full court press, after you get your whole history and physical, right? Full court press really is once you confirm that they broke the bag of water, you have three main interventions under 32 weeks of gestation. First one is steroids. So you're going to give steroids for fetal lung maturity at the dosage that I just said. You also can give magnesium for fetal neural protection. There were two main studies and I can kind of like show them right here, but one of the pooling studies showed that there's a relative risk reduction of 0.71 for cerebral palsy or severe forms of cerebral palsy if you're giving magnesium. The dosing that we give at our institution is, and I'll put up a thing right here, it's going to be six grams loading dose and then you're gonna be doing two grams per hour afterwards with concern that this will continue if there's imminent for delivery. So those are two things. The third intervention is antibiotics. These are latency antibiotics. Different providers might have their different regimens. A regimen that is commonly accepted in our community is azithro one gram PO immediately with IV ampicillin two grams every six hours for 48 hours. And after that 48 hour period, you switch to amoxicillin 500 milligrams three times a day to complete for the seven day course of antibiotics. That's latency antibiotics. So those are the three main things that you'd be able to do for the preterm patients under 32 weeks of gestation. You also would want to be able to get a NICU consult and an MFM consult. The NICU consult is for the parents to kind of have an assessment of what the outcomes are like, what survivability statistics they have, and what quality of life it is if the patient were to deliver tomorrow or the next day or the week after that. You'll also be getting a whole bunch of labs on these patients as well, but that's initially how you're going to triage that patient. The last group for patients, and this is a little bit sadder group, this is the P-viable, pre-viable pre P-prom. And for these patients, this is under 24 weeks of gestation, so there is a very low likelihood that the baby will survive if delivered. And for these patients, um, it might, although it depends on gestational age for different institutions, um, you have to start asking them once you confirm that they actually did break their bag of water, if they would want an induction to kind of have the baby delivered. And if that was done, you have to, it's probably best while you're in the room to ask all the groups of questions. So you're having this tough conversation at that point, but the questions you're gonna be asking is, do you want cytogenetics? Do you want like a further assessment for the baby with a fetopsy? Like right then at that time, you're gonna be asking those things because the, the patient probably, it's easier versus you coming back into the room and asking it. So you're gonna be asking for that. So cytogenetics, you're gonna do the fetopsy. Do you wanna see the baby if it's delivered? Do the baby clean? Do the baby put in clothing, memory box, like all these different things you're gonna have to ask for to make sure that you kind of get all that done at the time when you're going into the room. And there's also a whole bunch of other labs and there's an IUFD like ACOG practice bulletin that you can look at as well. That will be beneficial if the patient so chooses like for lupus anticoagulant and antiphospholipid syndrome, but you can look into those as well. Um, but those are the main pre-in pre categories for like how you're gonna look at a leakage of fluid patient.